Thanks, folks, and welcome back. Uh, our apologies for that. We've got a few technical issues. I think we almost got them figured out. Uh, so a couple things here that I'm going to say. First of all, uh, my first intent to interrupt this presentation. We had around four minutes or so left, so the video is okay. I'm going to give them the five minutes they need to finish up their, their presentations, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and just for those that, that are going to be presenting tonight and for the, the counselors around the table, when you're speaking, please speak directly into your mics. It might make it easier for others to hear. Okay? So sorry for the interruption. District Chair for the Ontario Long Mowing Association for District 3, which has um, Paris is again. And I'm just here to know that the Ontario Long Mowing Association, I'll let you know the Ontario Long Mowing Association is very supportive of the new facility here in Paris. Um, we're looking forward to uh, just for the growth and overall growth of the club and then to revitalize some things, which um, Rick has done actually a really great job since I've been chair for about the same length as he's been uh, president. Lawn bowls is a great sport. Um, it's one of the most inclusive sports you can find. Um, in our district, I know of a member who was a woman in Woodstock who's only 12 years old, and obviously there are members who are much older than that and have had no experience. And um, it's a game you can play at any age in life, at different levels. It can be as recreational as you want or um, as competitive. So for, my, for example, myself, I uh, won shirts from representing Ontario at last year. So it's a game that can be played for multiple generations. You can play with father to play with son, mother to play with daughter. It's um, a disability, whatever those disabilities are, physical, there's ways to play. Um, intellectual, we have a gentleman at our club in Woodstock that I'm a member of that plays and plays quite well um, as a member of developmental disability. So it's a very inclusive sport. Um, here in Paris, again, we have six. 60 members um, looking to grow in a, a clubhouse and great uh, facility. Um, just another thing to improve um, the overall quality of the membership and the experience of the club. As well, a new clubhouse along with some um, work on the greens. I mean, the club could do many things. Um, the potential is there. It's a, it's a beautiful city. Are things to consider is um, along with obviously all the members being there and um, having their um, quality of life in the community improve, it would also um, lead to possible potential um, development benefits for the club and for the community. Um, and I just thank you for um, giving us a chance to make a presentation. Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you. 
Christmas Eve. So to the committee, apparently we're still having some audio issues. Um, what I'm going to suggest for anybody that, that can hear on here, uh, if you could potentially go on to the YouTube channel and watch it, my understanding is the audio is working on the YouTube channel. I apologize for that, but that will be the end of being able to, to see and hear what's going on in the video. Okay, so I guess with that presentation, Questions on that? All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, uh, moving on to the adoption of previous minutes of the Gift of Good Wishes. Councillor Garneau, Councillor Copeland, questions? Seeing none, all in favor to proceed to approval. Opposed? That is carried. Any business arising from those minutes? Consent items. We've got a couple consent items here to be approved. We'll go through them one at a time. Uh, the first one is RPT-0021-23. Uh, it's a bylaw amendment to the regulate the Wood Air Burden. Um, there is a recommendation there. Can I get a move to get it on the floor from Councillor Howe to Councillor Kalpa? Um, not sure if you want to do a presentation or just available. Questions on the report? Councillor Miller.
point thirty nine. I'm just uh, I, I'd ask if uh, you could read that over and, and clean it up grammatically because <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't read it reads terrible. I'll just read or conditions attached the any permit or the provisions. I can't I can't understand what it's saying. So you can just have a look at that when you get a chance. It's a it's a point thirty nine. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sorry, Councillor Miller. At point thirty, you said thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. We don't have to do it tonight, but uh, if you could read it over, uh, it just it reads terrible. So Most definitely, we can do that. And I can't understand it. Any other questions on that? Okay, we do have a mover and a seconder. All those in favor? Opposed. That is carried. 7.12 RPT-0028-23, Municipal Drain Assessment. Can I get a mover? Councillor Coleman, Councillor Bell. Questions on this report? Councillor Miller, it's your night. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three, two, great. Do the assessed roles, and there's a lot of them on this report, do they, the, first of all, the the, the work's been done, I understand. And second of all, do they know this bill is coming or is this going to surprise you all? Uh, through the chair, this, this report cleans up five years worth of work that has been ongoing and some of the projects have been completed at this point. So this could be a surprise to some people that are coming, especially if ownership has changed hands. But uh, with this notice that goes out, there is a staff contact on the on the notice and in the billing so if anyone does get a question there'll be uh jason the monk this is when he was the superintendent so he'll be able to answer those questions and go through the process of what work was done if uh if that is the question or what uh what the bill is for okay yeah i appreciate the answer there uh through mr chair de greg i appreciate the answer and and i think I think we would all do well to keep this report handy because I could see a few phone calls coming in on that one. So thank you. Any other questions on that report? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Uh, 7.13 RPT-0035-23, uh, request a tender. Uh, there is a report there. Can I get a mover? Councillor Howes? Meeny, meeny, miny, moe. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Kyle. Qu um, questions? Councillor Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, having just come back from Roma, um, they talk a lot. Well, I shouldn't say they talk a lot. Um, I sat in on a lot of uh, concurrent sessions where they talk about asset management plans and all that. Um, and I would ask uh, maybe through you, Mr. Chair, the author of the report, um, are all these projects part of the asset management plan and uh, need to be done in this year? That's just a simple question. Could any of them be delayed at all? Mark, you can answer from there if you want, as long as that mic works. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the asset management plan hasn't been up to date yet, but everything that's noted on here is either in our OSIM report for the bridges, uh, the Paris master servicing plan for the sewer works. Uh, and some of the others, and our uh, state of the infrastructure report that we do for the road uh, repaving and maintenance. And I think, and then the leachate is needed for uh, the for Biggers Lane, so they all they all fit into a report that we currently have going forward, and they are necessary to be done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Th thank you. Uh, I just want to check, um, but it, it, I'm not happy uh, that the asset management plan isn't up to date, and uh, I think, in line with what Council Bell talked about, a uh, financial uh, long term plan, those two have to be tied at the hip. Um, it just makes good sense. Um, it's good stewardship of our resources. So um, obviously not for tonight for discussion, but I think we should all be thinking maybe uh, in the near future we, we start that process again. Duly noted. Any other questions? 
Seeing none. Opposed? That is carried. Okay, 7.14 RPT-37-23, recruitment of a line fence viewers and livestock evaluators. Mover, Councillor Kyle. Seconder, Councillor Garneau. Questions on that report? Councillor Kyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, more of a comment. Um, I did notice in the report that, um, I, I, first of all, I'm fully in support of it, but um, I would also recommend that reaching out to the local livestock uh, associations as well as perhaps the other farm organizations so Christian farmers if we have a local chapter of that might expand the pool of folks that might be willing to take on that role as somebody who works with the line both the line fences act and the wildlife predation act in my day job as well it's definitely important roles that we can't leave unfilled thank you for that any other questions all those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, that's it for consent items to be approved. Consent items to be received, if committee is willing. Anybody willing to put them all forward? Councillor Coleman, Councillor Howes. Any questions on any of them? Councillor Bell, then Councillor Bell for which one? Four. And Councillor Miller? 7.2.2, .2, but uh, I think uh, the water... People deserve uh, a little bit of praise for getting that perfect score for 7.2.4. Thank you for that. Okay, so we're going to, if none others need to be pulled. So for 7.2.1, 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6, all those in favor? Opposed? They are carried. So to 7.2.2, .2, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, so we may... Um, in the report, Heather says we may have to borrow, we may not have to borrow, we haven't done too much. But I know um, if you borrow a million dollars at 6.3%, the interest rate gets kind of high. Um, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars a month uh, just to borrow that. And if we get into a situation like that, I'm wondering, has any thought been given to borrowing from our Brant County Power Fund and I'm not saying don't pay it back. I'm just saying borrow from it short term, three months, four months. Borrow it with interest and maybe at prime. I, I haven't, uh, we don't need to get in that discussion tonight. But could we borrow it from that for the short term rather than borrow from a bank and, and, and give them all that interest? Okay. I'm not sure if there's staff on that. Heather, thank you. Uh, so the first question is, so we monitor our cash flow every day right now. She's looking at the cash flow. Um, we're talking a matter of maybe two weeks having to borrow um, just some money to get through to the next tax bill. So I think we have a big payment coming in on February 7th for our, uh, our debenture money will be coming in, the money that we borrowed. So that is really like we're just trying to get through to February 7th at this point. Um, we do have some funds um, back in our discussion on investments. We have some funds... Uh, with RBC securities right now and we can draw from that we are just we talk to them about how long it would take and whether it would be more of a financial hit to take that money out for a short term than to just leave it in so we are at this point looking like February 7th would be the critical point if we get to that we don't need to borrow any of the money. Councilor Miller? Just uh, thank you Mr. Chair uh, just doing some research um, other municipalities are in the exact same boat obviously and some do have that uh, fund that we have, same kind of fund set up. And uh, this, this, this is through LAS's uh, one um, investment program. So uh, some of the money, obviously, we know if it's tied up in, in, in uh, bonds or whatnot that have a time period, you can't touch it. I got that. But some of the money, and this might be prudent, <laughs> is just sitting in a high interest savings account. So they literally can get it within a day or two. So, again, uh, not for tonight's discussion, but maybe something we should think about again. Thank you. You don't need, do you want to respond to that or are you good? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell for 7.2.4. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. It's rather a comment on the broader subject of review of the 2022 elections. Um, and typically, I mean, if you, if you listen to CNN or any other major uh, network after an election, whether it's in Canada or in the US, 
there's an awful lot of data and, and, and analysis of who voted, how many people voted, what, whether they're male, female, what age group there were. I wonder whether it's possible that we could get something similar to that. Uh, we've done it for in, in respect of the accessibility plan, so we've analysed it from that viewpoint. And I would ask our staff whether it's possible to do a different perspective and give us some information about the kind of people that voted in our election uh, and where they were located. If there are big pockets of people in our county that didn't vote, you know, it, it tells us something that we've got to do in the next four years to encourage these people to come out and vote in four years' time. And I guess my question would be aimed at, at, at Heather, if that's okay with you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yep. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, Councillor Bell has asked for some further statistics and analysis on the election. Uh, we, we will be working through that. Uh, we've started into it a little bit. This accessibility report has like legislative timelines that we had to get this back, so this is our first piece. Um, the rest of it will be coming probably in the next few months. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Kyle. Yeah, just a quick question, and I'm not sure if it's Heather or Briar, I'm not sure who the question would be for, but just wondering if there was consideration given to, um, you know, in the review of the election and how things went with the online voting to leaving the voting open on election day to have people able to vote online for the election day as part of the accessibility. Yeah. Heather? Mr. Chair, um, we certainly took that into consideration. It was, it was a decision that we made in terms of risk reward kind of um, decision and it's something we'll look at again in the next election and we'll, we'll make that decision separately then when we have more details on where things are playing out with online voting as a overall global experience for them. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, uh, so now if we could uh, vote on 7.2.2 and 7.2.4, all those in favor? Opposed? They are carried. Uh, moving on to committee reports, 8.1, Accessibility Advisory. A mover? Councillor Kyle? Councillor Oakley? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. 8.2, Brant Connects Committee Report. Get a mover? Councillor Miller? Councillor Bell? Questions? Councillor Miller? One question, one comment, and the question, uh, I'm not even sure. No, no. Um, do we, if there's a, an error in the minutes, can we correct it here? Or do we connect it to the next Brant Connects committee meeting? I would suggest it would have to be noted here and corrected at the meeting. Okay, well, I'll just point out uh, it says who was present, and uh, James Rickard was not present. Okay. And I know that. Because um, I just want to point out something out uh, comment wise there, um, Mr. Chair, there is a a motion there, um, and we want to send this motion to quite a few people. As you can see, our MP, MPPs, AMO, FCM, um, and what it is, it's uh, what we're looking at. Um, the reason Brant Connects exists. Is because the, the goal is to give the goal is to make sure everybody has broadband in our county, right? We don't want to leave anybody behind. Um, there's a ASIP slash ICON provincial program. There's a UBF federal program. The Fed said they're going to have everybody hooked up by the end of 2030. Uh, the province has everybody by the end of 2025. But if you read between the lines, we know that that's not going to be 100%. We know that. But James Rickard, uh, at one of our meetings, and, and you know James has got the technical stuff, he says, boy, I wish we knew this. I wish we knew that. And I said to him, well, well why don't we ask them? So, <laughs> so I, I appreciate this conversation, but you're going somewhere, right? I, I'm go I'll get there quick. Okay. <laughs> so that that's behind the, the what we're asking for is that data that they provide in the U.S., they don't provide in Canada, they have it, they have the ISP information, that's what we're asking for, and that, that's what the motion's for. And just so you know, um, uh, the Provincial Ontario Chamber of Commerce and our own local Chamber of Commerce have also uh, are piggyback as well, so we're trying to get as many uh, groups as involved asking for that day. So that's that's where it's going. So, um, yeah, because like I say, everybody hears that we're going to have high speed by the end of 2025, 
I don't think that's going to be the case, but we're working on it. Okay, thank you for that. Any other questions on that report? All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Uh, 8.3, Tourism Advisory Committee. Mover? Councillor Kyle. Seconder? Councillor Oakley. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, moving on to staff reports. Uh, 9.1, RPT-0225-22, a refresh of the fence bylaw. There is a report there. Can I get a mover? Councillor Howes, Councillor Oakley. Questions on this report? Councillor Kyle. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think that there's to be a verbal update if Pam is online. Oh, there she is. Pam, go ahead. Hi, thank you, Councillor Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yep, go ahead. Okay, yeah, on, um, on behalf of Development Services and the project team, um, we've now received some good feedback uh, from Council. We'd like to thank you for that on the proposed fence and pool bylaw as brought forward to uh, the December 22 committee meeting. Um, and based on this discussion with the uh, council, uh, we will be bringing a further policy and development strategic initiatives committee report on February 14th. Uh, and this report will provide additional information for committee's consideration on such things as including a definition for temporary swimming pools to differentiate between uh, other types of swimming pools. Uh, it will also include a height regulation for temporary swimming pools that will require enclosures and permits. Uh, it will be amending the capacity of temporary swimming pools that will require enclosed permits, and it will include exemption criteria for um, above ground pools. So uh, we'd like to thank again Council for their input on this. Um, the project will align uh, well in February with our influx of swimming pool permits that we usually see in the spring, and it's understood that the uh, fence pool bylaw with the new timelines will work well for both Council and staff. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions back to Pam on that? Okay, looks like we're all good. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Uh, moving on to 9.2, which is RPT 0019-23, uh, the construction manager award for the new main branch of the library. Um, I think there's going to be a presentation on this. Is Kelly here? She is. Welcome. Just state your name when you come up there. And uh, first of all, can I get a mover to get it on the floor? Councillor Howes, Councillor McAlpine. Uh, thank you. I want to introduce with me is Jerry Schultz from Schultz and Zabak Architects. He is one of the principal architects on the project. So the report before you, um, consider a continuation of an approval from Council last June, where Council awarded the contract for design of the new branch library to DPAI Architects Inc. Uh, after approval and award of the contract, uh, staff, our project team, have been working with DPAI on design concepts for the project. And DPAI introduced the concept early on of bringing on a construction manager for this. And construction management is a model different than what you're used to, which is typically called design bid build or design build, uh, where the project is designed and then tendered and built. Um, this project, the Bocket Center, and locating a new main library at the Bocket Center, which includes significant heritage restoration, is a complex project and there are a lot of unknowns at this stage. So design management is proposed for this project because a design manager who is a contractor would be brought on now, still during the design phase of the project, who can help us understand during design where the largest cost unknowns are, uh, help us uh, nail down more accurate costing, especially given the volatility of the market right now, uh, since we know that jobs are often being costed higher than they could be. Um, a construction manager, a contractor, right, on the project at this phase can help the design be more appropriate and more affordable. So 
the process to hire a construction manager went through the county's tendering process. We uh, released an expression of an, a request for expressions of interest in the fall and shortlisted three firms who all uh, sent us a full uh, response to our request for proposals. And the three firms were evaluated against the criteria within the RFP. And the construction manager who we are recommending the council award the RFP to is CSL Limited. Uh, they are a firm based in Cambridge, so relatively local, and they have experience with complex heritage builds. So we are confident that they have the experience and the capacity to come on now as a contractor to help guide the design into uh, one that is most affordable and most realistic. Um, the other benefit of bringing a construction manager on at this phase is that having a contractor means we can then start two phases of the project earlier than we would in the design bid build process. With a contractor on board now, we could start demolition of the parts of the building that we know will be demolished. And we can also start heritage preservation as soon as possible, which is at this point critical for the building and its current state. So those are the two main benefits to the construction management model. And we, at this phase, if the construction manager is recommended, is approved, design would continue on the building. We would move into community consultation phases and uh, be ready to finish our business plan and finalize a budget, a draft budget for the project that would then come to council for approval. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions for uh, Councillor House? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. and. Kelly, you can lower that podium a little bit if you want. Worried about the microphone. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thank you for the information, and I, I understand how this approach um, can deliver some important timelines, and I understand how this approach can, uh, through, through this construction manager approach, we can drive some cost savings. But I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more through, uh, for, for people who are not familiar with this process, speak a little bit to how there's, there are still uh, a solid competitive process for sub-trades and, and, and that type of thing. Just, just to sure. help uh, assure people that the, the, the money being spent is, is, is being managed in a, in a competitive way. Of course, we wouldn't move to those phases until we had council approval, but in order to prepare the budget that comes for approval, the uh, contractor, the general contractor who is our construction manager would uh, begin to tender and get, uh, get estimates on costs for the project. Uh, we have chosen a firm who is local, who has local contacts, but every step followed, every step that happens would follow the county's purchasing bylaw, which of course has uh, you know, detailed instructions for limits and procedures that would be carefully followed. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to Kelly. Uh, I have a couple of comments and a couple of questions. I hope you'll okay. bear with me. Um, my experience as a project manager in a completely different industry, the oil industry, uh, always taught me that you need to do a really good front-end design, and I applaud the fact that you've recognized we don't have the skills, particularly in the area of the uh, heritage uh, refurbishment, and so bringing on somebody that has those skills makes a lot of sense, and then we balance that with using all of our uh, in-house policies for procurement. I, I think that we've got a, a good model there. I did look at the track record for our, uh, CSL. They've done some incredible work, or overseen some incredible work, and if, if people have don't know them, and I didn't know them until I looked on, online, it's worth looking at the gallery of the things that they have been in charge of. Um, but I, 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 can I come back to um, a question on, on cost? You've got it in the report, um, and it's just a bit of clarity that I'm looking for. Um, you said we've, we've funded 5.25 million for, to complete detailed design and initial construction work. And then you say additional funding is proposed in 2023 of another 9 million. So am I adding five to nine? Am I, um, tell me when I go wrong. 
Um, and then you say the remaining construction costs will be in the 24 capital program at an estimate of 12 million. So am I at 26 million? Is that the right number that we, we are looking to manage? Yes, yeah, so through the chair. Um, that is the closest estimate we have at the moment. Uh, without design and without a construction manager, the costs will be refined as we proceed forward. Yeah. So, um, uh, if you'll tolerate with me, uh, tolerate me, Mr. Chair. Does that 26 million include the costs of, of the project of the construction manager, or is that separate? Yeah, through the chair, yes, that would include it. Okay. And then I have a, a more fundamental question, uh, and I appreciate bringing on people that have got skills, um, but we have to manage cost, quality, and time. And in your report, you talk about the ability to bring things forward. I think it's universally understood in the project management world, you can only work on two of those dimensions. Um, so are we going to drive ourselves on time? Because I think that's wrong. I think it's fundamentally wrong. I think we need to give ourselves all the time we can. Um, and when we have a $26 million budget, I think we have to be incredibly thoughtful about managing cost. So I will go for quality and cost. And if it takes a little longer, and, and I appreciate where you would come from in time. I know you want to get this thing built. Uh, it's going to be wonderful when it's done. But I do think we have to bear in mind that we can't optimize on three dimensions. We cannot do that. So I would encourage you and other people involved in the project to reflect on, how, on what we're going to optimize this project on. And I think given today's circumstances, I think we have to think very carefully about not including, if we don't include cost in that, we won't get my vote. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may respond. Absolutely. Um, we, we completely agree. And part of the motivation for the construction manager is to get the best costing possible. We're very conscious of cost. There is a slight uh, urgency in time in the heritage component. Uh, the elements of the building are deteriorating rapidly, and with some of the money we already have approved in the budget, we could do some heritage intervention to save what we can of the building in the meantime, because the cost to restore it down the road, if it deteriorates further, would be even higher. So it, that's the one element of urgency. Yeah, just one final comment if I may, Mr. Chair. Every project I ever worked on in uh, the oil industry that was driven on a time schedule overran massively on cost. I'll just say that and say no more. Thank you. Uh, okay. Councillor Grano. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as a member of the library board, uh, very supportive to see this moving forward, uh, wearing my council hat. I have a few different questions that I think may be best direct to our CAO, other than Kelly, with regards to the construction management. So most of the time in municipal procurement, it's low bid that informs the decision. And in this case, we're looking to hire a general contractor, not yet knowing who the subtrades are. When I put my day job hat on, we sometimes work as general contractors, other times we work as subtrades. Uh, generally, everybody has their favorites and folks that perhaps due to past relationships will not work together. Uh, my concern with this approach is that we may find ourselves in a situation where a subtrade has come forward and is low bid, but may not be agreeable to the general contractor, and how do we reconcile that if we do find ourselves in that position? Because uh, there are a lot more unknowns in this, um, putting the contracting hat on going forward. Yeah, Sarah? Well, certainly through, through the chair to the councillor, I, I think the answer to that question is, again, we're bound by the, the confines of the, the county's purchasing policy here, and it will have to be followed. And certainly there could be some circumstances that are unusual, but uh, our focus is going to be on following that policy, Councillor. Councillor Garneau, you're, you're okay? Yeah, sorry, I just clarify, I wouldn't suggest we deviate from that. I'm just concerned we may find ourselves in a situation that causes us some complications that could have the adverse effects Councilor Bell is speaking to. It's... Okay, um, Councilor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I'm going back and back to uh, the delegates. Kelly, um, you mentioned the business plan. When are we gonna see the business plan come forward? I think this is what's, I make no bones about it. I think some of us have questions at the table and, and, and Councillor Bell mentioned 
he added it up pretty good too. And I got it right here too, what he added up to, how many million dollars the project is going to cost. I am really worried of a business plan and really worried of where we're going this year and budget and a whole lot of things. So I need to be reassured on a lot of things. Can you, can you help me? Okay. Shelly? Through the chair, we're estimating to have the business plan completed in Q2 2023. We're aiming for April, the April council meeting. Councilor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three to Kelly. Kelly, um, this fee of $30,000, do we need those services to come up with the detailed business plan? So through the chair, the $30,000 is to hire the construction manager. So all of the services that the construction manager would uh, contribute to design is included. So yes, the simple answer is yes, that is required to get detailed to the detailed design phase. Okay, and uh, for one further question then on that one. Um, so you think, are you stating, you're stating that we need to spend this money to at least get a detailed business plan? Um, how long would that be good for? Um, one year, two years? Um, you know, it, what, what I'm getting at is, okay, we approve this tonight. Come, then we see the full detailed business plan. We all have some doubts and then we don't support it say this year how long would that business plan be good for based on on at least this 30,000 so through the, through the chair um, the business plan will be costed in today's dollars but we'll have um, contingencies and we'll describe the contingencies and the possible impacts or costs of a different timeline okay thank you okay. Any other questions on this report? Okay, um, something I need to bring to note on this report. Um, the last clause in the recommendation refers to a report number of zero, R, RFP 094-22. My understanding is that is the incorrect report number on that. We do have the correct one, I believe. Um, so what I'm looking for, the report itself is fine. It's just the report number that was that was put on incorrectly. If committee is up to it, I'm just looking for an amendment, Councillor Miller, to put the new number in there. Councillor Howes, you'll second that. Any questions on what's being done here? Okay. So all those in favor of the amended report? Opposed? That is carried, and we'll be sure to update that uh, report number on that. Thank you, committee. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on, RPT-0029-23, the Paris Long Bowling Club concept. Uh, Mr. Kathy's going to have a little presentation here. Mr. Chair, did you want to vote on that motion, that report? Oh, my apologies. The, the voting on the motion as amended. All in favor? Sorry, Mr. Are, are we allowed... Just uh, debate on this motion before we can vote. I ask questions. Go ahead. Okay. Pardon me, Kathy. Just bear with us just one second here. Okay, Councillor Miller. Um, I understand uh, from what Kelly is saying um, that there's um, uh, some heritage features that uh, need some work. And I don't know if that 30000 wouldn't be better spent on addressing those needs rather than going ahead with a pre-construction service fee of 30000 You're posing that as a question to Kelly, or are you posing that as a that, statement? That, no, is not, that is not to Kelly. I'm just, I maybe staff can help me out with that one. Could could we use that 30000 for, like I say, um, archaeological, not archaeological, but, you know, heritage features? So I'm going to back up here a minute. So we had a motion on there that was amended to change the report number. And then we voted on the amendment and that passed. So now we're voting on the report as amended and you're having a question as to the report now as amended. That's correct. On the main motion, that's correct. Okay. Somebody from staff able to respond to that? Kelly, can you come on up for just a minute? Are able to speak to that? Okay. Uh, so my apologies for stepping away. I should have stayed. 
um, if I'm, Mr. Chair, if I'm understanding the question, um, diverting $30,000 to the heritage preservation, um, and certainly every penny would help heritage preservation, but there is money already attributed, uh, assigned in the budget for heritage restoration. And the $30,000 for the construction manager would help us uh, use those dollars already budgeted most effectively to get the best value out of the heritage restoration, uh, but would also give us other services entirely that would benefit the project's timeline, our understanding of the timeline, and our understanding of the budget. If I've understood the question correctly. So, sorry, yeah, so my understanding from what you're saying, Kelly, is there's already money set aside for that restoration. That's correct. Councillor Miller? That answers my question, and then, uh, okay, then I'll have a comment after we say Go ahead with your comment. Well, we still have the uh, presenter at the podium, and I thought we could debate it uh, at the table. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Councillor Miller. Just, um, I think the library is in a tough position. Um, we said we would like them to go with the parish old town hall. Unfortunately for them, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, heritage with that, and that drives up costs. So they, we put them in a tough place. Um, if it was a new build, it'd probably be a lot cheaper. Uh, having said that, um, I am a support of preserving the Paris Old Town Hall. I voted years ago for it. I still support it. I'm in support of the library going there. That gets me zero support out in Ward 4, just so everybody knows. But um, it's just too much money, Mr. Chair. It's simply too much money. Um, $26 million. So we go with this step. We go with the next step. Uh, what I would like to do is... If, I, if it was up to me, um, is, is, is get our financial uh, long-term plan in place, see where we're at, maybe put some money aside in reserves, uh, go from there. Uh, we saw a good presentation this morning how uh, some municipalities, when they want to build something new, they invest their monies, and it builds and it grows as they work on it, um, you know, doing the soft design and all that stuff. So... I'm not in support of this. I don't think we should be going ahead with it. It's just too much money uh, as we sink more money in it. We know we're in a tough uh, position budget-wise, so I, I don't see the purpose of it. I think the optics look bad because I think, well, 95% of my voters will tell me it is bad. So I'm not Thank in support that. of this at the time. Councillor Howes. Excuse me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and just respectfully, I wanted to... You know, Councillor Miller said, you know, this is the place for some debate, but I, I don't think this is the place to debate the $26 million. Like, I, I think there will be future conversations where we have opportunity to discuss, you know, that amount of money and the timing of when it happens. You know, this, this is specifically about um, approving, uh, selecting this project, uh, this construction manager. And, and I think we need to stay focused on that. Mm -hmm. And, and I believe there'll be plenty of opportunity later to talk about some of the other concerns. Thank you. Councillor Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think Kelly uh, is bringing forward exactly the right recommendation. Uh, all my experience in oil industry, I had to take over projects from geologists and petroleum engineers who didn't know how to build a platform. My team knew how to build a platform. And my team brought in the expertise that translated a concept into a confident, detailed design and construction schedule. And that's what this construction manager will do. We might not like the end number, so I'm, I'm where, where Councillor Miller and Councillor Coleman is, that, that we might find that actually the answer isn't 26. The answer might be 35, in which case, is completely different discussion and as Councillor House says there's a different time to have that discussion but I think without that kind of expertise we will not be able to get a confident number that we can actually use in our analysis in our long-term planning in our in, a, in our debate about this particular subject so I fully support what Kelly is doing thank you Councillor Garneau yeah so um I wholeheartedly share Councillor Miller's concerns here and I am trying to balance both sides of things because I know that uh, in Ward 5 folks feel both underserviced by library uh, 
underserviced access to library services, but at the same time also disproportionately feel that things go to other parts in the county. And I think this may exacerbate those tensions. That said, I think we need to go ahead with the construction manager on the costing so we can make that informed decision and have that communication with our public. Uh, last week when we convened as the library board and the Bucket Center, uh, Kelly and the team gave a really good presentation that talked about how um, architects and ourselves can have lots of ideas and how these can very quickly find us in a position where the cost goes up and where the construction manager comes in is someone who can help moderate some of that so we can start to make those decisions about the needs to haves, the nice to haves, and get this scoped. Um, and so while I do have very significant reservations about the end goal, I think we need to do this part to really make an informed decision. And I know $30,000 does feel like a lot of money, but if that's what we need to spend in order to get to the point where we can have that informed decision, I think that's the right step to make right now. So supporting the motion. Okay. Uh, Councillor Coleman, last comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and uh, I agree with most of the speakers here this evening. Um, I will support it for now because Kelly answered my question. A business plan is going to come forward in April. No business plan comes forward in April, and it's not acceptable in my terms, then I won't be supporting it after that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're all clear. We're voting on the amendment as amended. Sorry. The, the, the <laughs> see what you've done. Yes. Yes. The recommendation as amended is the new report number. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, so back to 9.3. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Paris Lawn Bowling Club, concept design. Thank you, Mr. Whenever you're ready, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm pleased to present the concept plan for the facility that embodies the spirit of the humble beginnings of the Paris Lawn Bowling Club back in the 1880s uh, to our present needs of a multi-use community center uh, to meet many uh, of our residents' needs. I'm just gonna take you through the design package. I won't really go through the report, but I'm happy to answer any questions uh, related to the report as we go. Um, I think you all have that in your package, um, so I'm on uh, page three at this at this point on the site. So the for those who may not be familiar with the site that may be listening, this uh, existing site is located at 169 Grand River Street North, uh, right across the road from the Paris Presbyterian Church as a landmark. It's a little bit of a hidden property in behind uh, several homes. We have a 1.16 acre property uh, with a 210 feet of riverfront view that is largely obstructed by uh, trees, but there is a couple peekaboo view, peek views uh, that we hope to enhance. Uh, the club itself, the Paris Lawn Bowling Club, really uh, loves the ambiance of this site, the train bridge there, the noises of the dam below, it is a very uh, engaging site for them to uh, look, look at doing all of their activities there. Um, and, you know, the central location in Paris is also an attractive uh, piece of the puzzle for that club. They do like the fact that it's walkable for some folks. Uh, there is some, some parking that's available for others that don't walk, so those are all the positives. This property was gifted to the uh, club in the 1920s and the existing clubhouse um, was constructed in 1948 and it does now require replacement. There are uh, several structural, aesthetic and accessibility issues with this facility. The plan presented this evening utilizes the existing building footprint. It will get just slightly larger than the existing footprint, but in the same location. And it leverages our 
cooperative agreement with the Paris Presbyterian Church for some of the lands to allow for a functional and expanded parking area. And that will serve both the church uh, during their programming as well as the programming that the County of Brant, Paris Lawn Bowling Club, and the Paris Seniors would like to offer in this uh, multi-use facility. I don't know if, Briar, you can forward that to the floor plan. How do you, okay. Have to do it here? Okay, sorry, I can do that then. <laughs> I will just speak to this slide slightly. Um, the yellow line does represent the uh, flood line that the GRCA has, so that does give us a little bit of an opportunity to move the building, make the building just slightly larger while still maintaining the green space that exists and adding the amenities such as the parking lot and some walkways, et cetera, that are required for this site. So in this uh, depiction, you do see there are 16 additional parking spaces, uh, regular parking spaces plus two barrier-free that would be added and those would be uh, partially on uh, land owned by the church, uh, which basically lines up with the red lines uh, are our property boundaries. And if anything outside of the red lines would uh, be the church property, the, the existing parking lot would be extended. And we have spoken with uh, the church and they're willing to um, have a more formal agreement since there would be infrastructure improvements on the site and that would be coming forth to council at a later time uh, as we work through that. So this floor plan, uh, first of all uh, it, the new facility will be truly multi-use, uh, a recreational facility that can be used by our two major groups, the Paris Lawn Bowling Club as well as the Paris Senior Citizens Club. It will also be available to the public uh, for rentals, for celebrations, events of that sort, and programs that we offer uh, to the public as well, such as yoga or fitness programs or uh, leader and training courses, all types of different programs that we offer. It is a very good location. Uh, it will have a capacity of 60 people. Um, there is no other county facility that we have that actually is kind of that mid size. We either have like a 30 or 35 per person capacity or something larger like the Lafarge Hall that would be 100 or 120. So it is a very good size for even internal meetings and things like that that we really can't accommodate uh, for any other facilities. As per the... Uh, Official Plan Municipal Comprehensive Report, the percentage of the 55 plus population is forecasted to more than double by 2051. This is one of the main uh, driving forces in actually having a facility of this type that would be available with that senior's focus. Uh, the Paris Lawn Bowling Club members do plan on continuing their evening programming they may expand that slightly to some evenings, uh, beyond evenings into the weekends. And the Paris Seniors Club, on the other hand, they have daytime use in the afternoons. So the two really balance quite well with the times that they are needed for this facility. Uh, they are looking at increasing their needs uh, at the Legion right now. They're only able to offer two days a week of programming for seniors. But this opens the door to a lot more possibilities, and they are really getting pushed by their members to offer three to four days a week. Um, their their uh, membership is growing rapidly, and that's just a reflection of our community and how it's changing over the last few years. Uh, people are wanting to get involved in things, but there really isn't a lot of opportunity to do so because we just don't have facilities that will allow for that. But this will provide a lot of versatility for our future needs, and that's really what it's being designed um, for. So in this main floor plan, you will see it's quite a large open space, about 25 feet by 50 feet approximately. 
gives us uh, quite a bit of room there to do different types of programs. And it'll be, like I said, very versatile. We can move things around as needed. There will be um, amenities for both groups, uh, storage, um, washrooms, of course, accessible uh, facilities completely. We have no accessibility at this facility right now. Uh, the existing facility, a small kitchenette that serves the needs of, of these user groups, and um, some outdoor storage as well that would uh, help alleviate some of the sheds and other uh, eyesores that may be on the property currently. This uh, facility would be one of the first in the county that would have a, have a net zero design that's owned by the county, so we are really looking to include that into the design. So there's likely going to be a solar component. You really don't see that in this in this uh, conceptual work, but that is something we're working on to include that in this plan. Just a couple of visuals to give you an idea. So this would be looking out from the interior of the building out to the greens. Uh, they would have a covered patio there that's uh, been something that's highly uh, desired by all of our residents for shade anywhere we build a park or have any outdoor space that's kind of a necessity in today's world so definitely have that outdoor space that can also help with the social aspects of uh, events that are happening here and uh, the green space will not change so that's the existing uh, greens have about eight rinks uh, that they can have programming on for the lawn bowling component Next uh, slide is a visual of the exterior of the building. It is very reminiscent of the existing building, which was part of the uh, criteria we gave the architect. It is a low maintenance exterior. Um, and some considerations um, that have been discussed at the table are really looking at uh, renaming this facility to make it a community center versus just the Paris Lawn Bowling Club. So that's definitely on the radar in some of the public comments that we've received and we think would be a very positive aspect to this. This facility has, as you can see on the frontage, uh, two layers of windows across the entire front of the building uh, that will re really have a nice uh, natural lighting um, and great views to the outdoors from uh, this site and I think um, that's one of the value adds to this uh, this project is that you are going to leverage that natural lighting indoors and it will have a very good look and feel um, next slide this is a little bit of an interior view of what we're expecting um, this is attractive, modern, uh, functional, um, that will be heavily used. We really do anticipate a lot of use of this building and uh, having that covered area gives you a little bit of shade but also gives you really some opportunities with the vaulting and, and really um, having all the amenities in this space that we need and making it as uh, attractive at a rental facility as, as we can, can get. Just another view there from the interior, so you can see there's access to the kitchen. It would be an open space with a little bar type pipe uh, area to serve from. Just kind of, it isn't a huge space, but it's a functional space. It allows for storage for some of the memorabilia of the history of the club at the one area, some storage for the seniors, um, washrooms, and universal washrooms uh, that uh, are required by the building code. So the cost uh, estimates are provided here. The architect has provided us with a range of costs. Uh, as previously mentioned, there are some materials that are still uh, having quite volatile uh, escalations in the marketplace. Uh, some of the specifications aren't fully costed out at this point. We're at a class D estimate uh, for this. Um, we plan on doing the Class A estimate. We've already gotten a quote for that um, prior to the construction tender as part of the project plan. 
And I will note that in this, uh, you know, range of prices from the $350 a square foot to the 500, uh, there is also a large contingency. Uh, quite a bit of the servicing in this area is quite antiquated. Some of there's a few unknowns. Um, we have replaced a few things over the years, but really everything would need to be upgraded that's underground. So that's part of uh, the construction cost as well. So the building cost is there, you know, ranging around that $1 million, some contingency, which may or may not be needed. Uh, civil works, landscape work, some restoration of the green, because we will have to get construction equipment apart, across part of the green. And then your mechanical electricals are built into those costs with the net zero um, being included in that. So that's our estimated cost. And our project timeline, we are right now at uh, design development is basically complete. We're um, bringing this a report forward for approval for the concept design so we can really get the construction tender documents uh, flushed out at this stage. And then that will continue until April as they work on that. Um, Council approval, obviously, we're looking for in, in February as part of the uh, budget process. And then the tender would be issued in the May, May period with, again, another approval for the final tender results in about June, which would allow us a little bit of time to get ready for demolition in the fall and to start the construction foundation work, etc., in the early fall and then continue the build over the winter to be ready for the next spring. Happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you for that. Um, can I get somebody to move this on the floor, please, Mr. Fort? Councillor Coleman, Councillor Howes. Thank you for that. Questions, Councillor Howes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Kathy. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the great work done on this. Uh, report, the great liaison with the architect. Um, every Everybody who I'm aware of who has seen this design absolutely loves it. Um, and I, I agree with something you were talking about in, in your presentation. I, I think it's going to be necessary to rebrand this soon um, because we're we're not looking at spending $1.6 million to make a great lawn bowling facility for 60 members of the Paris Lawn Bowling Club. That's not the story here. Um, and, and as we move forward, it's gonna be, it's gonna be important. You, you reinforced it very appropriately uh, in your presentation. This is going to be a godsend for seniors. The seniors in our community are gonna going to be very well served for this and there's a lot more than 60 of them. Um, so uh, my question for you is a specific one and it, we had a group of enthusiastic lawn bowling folks here earlier and one of them asked me a question and I, I promised that I would I would offer it up. Um, jumping a couple steps ahead to this is this is done and and different types of groups are enjoying it what steps do you think will have to be taken to protect the greens from unintended use and damage? Um, thanks. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. That is something we live with with a lot of our facilities, and we, ha we usually develop a package for our user groups that uh, outlines what they can and can't do. Um, and obviously it requires some monitoring on our behalf as well just to inform these groups that you're not supposed to go out there with your high heels in the middle of the green and things like that. So uh, there may be some barriers that we could uh, put up uh, for certain time frames, that type of thing, uh, just to discourage that type of thing. Nothing too drastic, but just enough to say, oh, here's a, here's a line, don't cross here. Um, and that's really our approach is just really more an educational approach. Uh, with some minor um, barriers that may be required. Thank you. Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and through you to, to Kathy. Um, you talked about, uh, I guess you could say, 
this is a multi-use building or it's going to be. My concern is the rentals. Is, is the lawn bowling going to have total rights on it over the summertime or is it you book into the uh, to the sports complex for your rentals, whatnot, as first come, first serve. How is this going to work? Because this is what I'm worried about is is the confrontations we could see uh, because you wanted to make it a community building and I'm fully supportive of Customer House tucked on it. That's what it needs to be. But I just want to know how you got that figured out, how you're going to make this work. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that question. The answer is that we do an allocation process and we have agreements for specific dates and times for those organizations first. Anything that's left over, which is significant because they're looking at two nights a week, possibly a Sunday afternoon or something like that for the lawn bowling portion. The daytime use uh, for the seniors at this point, they're at two days. They would like to increase to three to four with some special events and things like that thrown in. We always put in all of the standard like dates and times first, then we do the special events, and then whatever's left would be available for other uses. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Kathy. Uh, really follow up on the, the point that uh, Councillor Coleman made. Um, do we have a, a business plan that would reflect the servicing of the costs of building this and the cost of running it? and the costs on the revenues we will take in through rentals. I think I recall one when we talked about this, I'm gonna say a year, year and a half ago. I think at the time though, we were talking about a million dollars rather than one six. So I would be interested to see an update on that. Uh, and I feel it's a little difficult to say yes to this in the absence of that. Um, I don't know whether it's readily available in your slide pack somewhere, but it, it's, it's, I think it, the, before, because it, it, in a sense it looks like we're subverting or circumventing the um, uh, budgeting exercise here because you're asking us to approve it and I think we really can't approve it until we bring it to the budget table and the committee of the whole. So you've got a little bit of time I think, Cathy. Uh, I, I absolutely support it in principle. I think it's a fabulous idea. I was work, I, I was a, a warden at St. James when, St. James Church when the um, Paris Seniors Club came knocking on the door because they got evicted effectively from the uh, Riverview, uh, sorry, it was Riverview, the, the Queensview. Queensview over the top of the hill. Um, so, you know, they're, they're a bit of a migrant bunch at the moment and I would like to give them a permanent home. So I'm really supportive of it, but I would like to see the, the thing built out into a business plan, but you have my support in principle. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, the uh, business plan uh, for this building was included in the 2019 report. As you probably recall, this budget uh, through budget deliberations, this has been delayed a couple of years, and the market has changed significantly in those couple of years uh, through the pandemic. Um, the operating budget really is not going to change significantly. We don't think at all. Uh, obviously, we will have more revenue. Currently, we have very minimal revenue for this facility of only a couple thousand dollars a year. Um, and this budget has remained quite stable over a long time. We said spend about twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, depending on you know if there's special projects that need to be done. But as a an investment in the community is a very small amount of operating costs. We're hoping to reduce those operating costs slightly with the net zero as well on the utility side. So uh, we will certainly bring forward um, a more comprehensive budget to refresh your memories on where we were at uh, a few years ago, if that's your uh, request. Councillor Bell? So, uh, in order to progress this thing, then I would like to make a, an amendment, hopefully a friendly amendment, that we sup can support this in principle, subject to seeing the business plan and then it going through the normal budgeting process. I'd look for a seconder. Thank you. Councillor Miller? Okay. Um, anybody want to speak to that amendment? Councillor Miller? No, uh, not, not to the amendment, but to the, to the report itself. So. Okay. So does anybody want to speak to the amendment? Yeah. So to be clear, Councillor Bell, what you're saying is um, we're going to 
approve it in principle and refer it to the budget process as part of the, it, it does state in there that uh, staff include the project in the 2023 capital budget. So it is, it's kind of worded that way, but not really. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Chair, but the, the line before that says that this project be approved. Yeah. And, and I, that's a little bit too strong for me just at the moment. Uh, I'm quite a long way down the track to saying yes, but I would like to see the, the business plan. And that's why I suggest we perhaps refer it to the, um, the budget de deliberations that we're going to have next week. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, approve in concept and refer it to the budget process, correct? As an amendment. Everybody's clear on the amendment? Okay. So all those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Okay. So the amendment is carried. Councillor Miller, you want to speak to the motion as amended? No, Mr. Chair. I'd like to ask uh, Kathy a couple of questions. Okay. Go ahead. Proceed. Uh, thank you. Um, Kathy, I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked uh, the two presenters earlier. Um, can the greens be used for other activities? And thank you, Councillor Belford, mentioned croquet. Um, I know bocce ball is also uh, fairly popular. Could it be used for anything else? Or does it have to just, once you set up for lawn bowling, that, it's lawn bowling forever? I thank you uh, for that question, Councillor. Uh, this facility is very limited in what you can do just because of the construction of the greens themselves. You can't do croquet on this. You can't, you could potentially do bocce, but you would have to have some portable kind of rails uh, built into the, that would be put on top of the green. Uh, so there are a couple of uses, but it is limited. I will say that. Okay, that, that's, I think you know why I would, I would want <laughs> to spread that usage out. Um, because as as they pointed out, they I mean they only have sixty members, and, and to be honest, I, I remember the twenty nineteen report, and they said the same thing there. They're trying to grow new members, and they never seem to get that many more. Um, I have a I just I was wondering, uh, through Mr. Chair to Kathy, can you put it in perspective? Um, it's we're looking at one point six million spread over sixty members in capital costs. That works out to about twenty five thousand dollars per person. Uh, for a seasonal sport, it, it to me it seems like a lot. Um, maybe it's not. Like if I I look say at an arena, also a seasonal sport would would we be would it be that kind of money? So I, I'm going to jump in here for just one second here because we're 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 speaking directly to the lawn bowling part of it, but there's more to it than that, Councillor. And and as we say, this is this is this is going to be a community center, and one of the uses of the community center will be lawn bowling. So I don't think it's fair to say $1.6 million divided by 60 people because there's also seniors that are going to be using it and there's going to be rentals that are going to be using it. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to disallow that question because I don't think it makes sense. Mr. Chair, we could debate on a community center. I, I appreciate that, Councillor, yeah. but you're specifically stating the fact that you got $1.6 million divided by 60 members, that it will not be divided by 60 members, Councillor. But if we look at the community spaces, like if that was, if we're looking at community space, Mr. Chair, we got a lot of community spaces throughout the county, right? We do have community spaces. I, I, we're not going to debate this back and forth. We, yes, we do have other community spaces around the county. As was stated earlier, we, don't, we do not have ones of this size. There's great big ones and there's small ones. This is the perfect size. Again, there's going to be – the point I'm trying to make here, Councilor Miller, is the fact that you are specifically stating the fact of 1.6 million between 60 users. That's not the case. There's more than 60 users when we take the seniors into effect – we take the lawn bowling, which is going to be out of this community center, and we take other events that are going to be out of there. Okay, well, you're the chair. Um, what was I going to say? Green centers. Yeah, but, okay, yeah, no, okay, we'll leave it at that. It just, it, it is the lawn bowling club that's the driver of that. So, but that's, again, what goes back to what I asked earlier, trying to spread the use of that out. So we have the seniors in there. Okay, then uh, I guess my last question would be, um, Oh, I had one on operating costs, but Council Bell covered that. In, in in the report, Kathy, you have a five hundred dollars square foot, and you have a three fifty square foot. Do you need direction from Council for that, or is that just uh, that's the range, and and it comes out at what it comes out at? Through you, Mr. Chair, we did uh, provide that information as was recommended by the architect. We did put in the high end of the budget. 
uh, just to make sure that we're not coming back uh, if we need to at a later time. But we are very hopeful that this project would be coming in at the lower end, uh, that we wouldn't re be required to finance it to that level. Okay, thank you. Uh, just one further question, Mr. Chair. Um, the Lawn Bowling Club itself, they've committed to $150,000. Um, we, we, there's no there's no agreement with them. There's no anything like that with them to keep them committed to that? At this time, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we have uh, discussed having a more formal uh, agreement with them. Um, the existing agreement uh, from 1986 would become null and void at this point, and we would re renegotiate that agreement for um, both the fundraising campaign as well as the operational costs uh, moving forward. And that is uh, good news. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Last comment or question, Councilor House. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and just it is a comment. Um, but just to reinforce some context here, and, and partially for people who will be watching this from home, um, I think it is important to, to uh, appreciate that this is a valuable community asset that the town of Paris, not the county of Brant, the town of Paris acquired, acquired for a dollar. And I love the fact that this community asset will now be valuable all year round. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to open at the end of May and close in October. It's, it, we're going to be able to use it all year round, which, which goes back to a previous comment. Um, lots of users, lots of, of, of opportunity here. And, uh, and none of us had hindsight. None of us could have pr predicted a pandemic. But arguably, when we looked at building this project two or three years ago, we might have built it for a million dollars. Now we're looking at building it for a million six. And so I, I worry a little bit what happens if we put it off for another three years. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and uh, not to belabor on the board, but Councillor Miller did touch on the fundraising. So what, can you refresh my memory, uh, the, master, the Re Recreation Master Plan has got in where most of the fundraising for all our uh, new builds coming down the road. What is the percentage? Can you tell me? Tell me. Cindy? Uh, through the chair. So the recreation master plan includes a recommendation that the county use a guideline of 25% of build costs for facilities that are a million dollars plus. Um, it is a guideline. As I said at a previous meeting, it's not our policy. Um, and I think when we're looking at a fundraising campaign, we have to look at how realistic it is as well um, to raise funds. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got a motion here that's been amended to uh, approve it and send it through to the budget process. It has been moved and seconded, so we are voting on the amendment. Sorry, we are voting on the motion as amended. Everybody's clear? All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, thank you for that. Communications, I see none. Other business? Councillor Howes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Find my notes. Um, I am just uh, bringing forward a... Uh, uh, a, a notice of, uh, I will be bringing forward a motion at the next uh, next week's meeting, a council meeting, regarding an adjustment to the timing of our February policy meeting, which occurs on February 14th. Details to follow. Now you got us all on the edge of our seats. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Somebody's got a Valentine, so we'll leave it at that. Um, okay, so there was no, no no other business. Nobody else said anything for other business. So the next is in camera. Can I get a motion to go in camera, please? Councillor Coleman, Councillor Miller. We will take a two-minute recess. Thank you.
Okay, so we are back in open session now. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't see anything else on the agenda other than our next meeting, which is February the 21st of 2023. Motion to adjourn, Councillor Coleman. Thank you.